All right, so the uh, One Piece live action Netflix show has released, and I'll just say right now, it's really good. Yeah, I was, when I first heard that there was going to be a live action show, I was convinced it would suck because I was thinking, okay, One Piece is not something that can really be adapted. Netflix is not great at this sort of thing either. So I was thinking, okay, it's going to be really bad. But then over the past like year, maybe year and a half, uh, and we've been getting more details about the production. We've been seeing how much Aichiro Oda, the creator of the original manga, uh, was working with the showrunner. And we saw how much the showrunner loves One Piece. Like that dude loves One Piece more than he loves the air he breathes. And seeing some of the casting and stuff, I was thinking, okay, I think it'll be a decent show, but it still won't be good because One Piece is just really goofy and over the top, even by anime standards. But I am happy to say I was wrong. Yeah, I was wrong. The One Piece Netflix live action show is very good, very enjoyable. It keeps true to the spirit of the original manga. It still tweaks some stuff so that it'll work better in this uh, new format. But overall, it's a very, very enjoyable watch. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Also, yes, I do have some new sound stuff going on. I'm still tweaking the equipment, so apologies if it sounds a little off, but yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Now, I am a fan of One Piece. I wouldn't call myself a super fan, but it is a very good manga and I enjoy it. Uh, but the show is pretty good both for people who are fans of the original series and people who are not very familiar with it. Uh, overall, I just I do recommend it for both groups of people. But if you're worried that this won't be able to adapt it well, I'm not going to say it does it great 100% of the time because there are a few missteps in there. But overall, I'm saying it's really good. Like it, The first season is just the entire East Blue Saga before the Straw Hat Pirates go to the Grand Line. And it compresses the story down a little bit in some ways. It also stretches it in other ways. Uh, but mostly it does keep the focus on the characters, which is where it should be. Because by and large, One Piece is a story about this group of weirdos and misfits going on a series of adventures and becoming super well-known because of it. The goofiness of the original manga is also in this show. And they either embrace it wholeheartedly so it still works, or they tone it down without losing its identity. And by embracing it, they make it feel natural. You know, like, for example, Zoro, one of the main characters here, has green hair. Like, it's just naturally green. There are people in the world of One Piece who have naturally green hair, naturally blue hair, naturally pink hair. Like, that's just a thing that happens. And none of the other characters comment on it. You know, if they had tried to do, like, some Joss Whedon-esque dialogue about how, whoa, your hair is green, that's really weird, but no, they just... They see it, they don't even comment on it, it's just a normal thing in this world. Similarly, when we see Fishman, you know, the first Fishman we see is just a dude who has, like, fins and gills on his head, and none of the other characters comment on it or think that's weird, because Fishmen are just a part of this world. And for those unfamiliar, because if you're unfamiliar with One Piece, you're probably going to be confused about anything I'm talking about, basically, it is the story of a kid named Monkey D. Luffy, who has the power of a devil fruit, like he ate it and it turned his entire body into rubber so he can stretch like Mr. Fantastic. I'm Monkey D. Luffy. And I'm gonna be king of the pirates. And his dream is to go out and become the king of the pirates. And the way he's gonna do that is by finding the treasure of the previous king of the pirates, who died about 20 years before the story began, and no one has found his treasure since then. And at first he's on his own, but then this uh, first season is him traveling around, meeting new people, and getting them to join his crew. So they're gathering up, and then they're truly heading off on their journey. So this season is like a series of smaller adventures, and they're a bit better connected in the show than in the original manga, because there's more of a through line, basically. Uh, but overall, they are still pretty self-contained. While all this is going on, they are pursued by the Marines, who are like, you know, the armed forces of the government in this world. Uh, specifically, the ones pursuing them are led by a guy named Vice Admiral Garp, who people who read the manga, don't spoil shit without marking it in the comments, please. Like, I know you know a bunch of stuff like, oh, this is gonna come back later, and oh, this, these characters' relationships, well, at least mark it so people who aren't familiar with it don't get spoiled, come on. But yes, they're being led by a guy named Garp, who becomes more and more important as the season goes on. And there also is a B-plot revolving around the Fishman Pirates, led by a dude named Arlong, who I mentioned before, I don't like the way he looks in live action. I still don't like it, but 
his actor does give a decent performance, so that's nice, I guess. And basically, the story is really good when it's following the Straw Hat Pirates, and it's n less good when it's following others. Like, in the first episode, Luffy meets a kid named Kobe, and then at the end, Kobe goes off to join the Marines, because that's his dream, and Luffy's like, okay, we're still friends, good luck, have fun. And in the manga, they don't see each other again for a very, very long time, but in the show, Kobe is still a major character who I believe appears in every episode and they like follow his journey like they follow him studying under Garp and stuff and Kobe is just not that interesting of a character like it, it's kind of nice to see him come back much much later in the manga because it's just like oh yeah I remember that guy How, how's it going man glad to see you're doing well for yourself but then in the show like there's not that much depth to his character but they're still focusing on him a lot and it really drags down the pacing similarly all the stuff that they show with Arlong before he really becomes relevant to the A plot with the Straw Hats and everything is not as bad, but it does feel very superfluous and it does still kind of damage the pacing. Now I get that that's part of the issue with trying to make this more like a American drama or a Western drama, if you want to say that, uh, but it just didn't quite work in this way. Like there were some wrinkles they could have smoothed out. That said, Arlong is still a decent antagonist for the season as a whole. Like, they, they talk about the racism that fishmen face, which in the manga didn't come up until much, much later. Uh, and so Arlong talks about that, and he, he's a bit more sympathetic, basically. And then he's still a psychopath, but, you know, he's more sympathetic than he was originally. So he works reasonably well as an antagonist. And pretty much all of the characters here are pretty much the same as they were in the manga, but it's a little more subdued, so it feels less cartoony. Like, you know, Zoro in the manga has a very bad sense of direction, like he would get lost in his own house, and the joke is kind of played out at this point, to be honest, but, you know, that's part of who he is. Uh, but in the show, he is he still has a bad sense of direction, but it's not so over the top that it becomes ridiculous and unbelievable. Like, he gets lost in places where it would kind of make sense for somebody to get lost. And similarly, Luffy is still endearingly dumb about stuff, but he's less dumb. You know, he doesn't seem borderline disabled the way he does in the manga. During fights, characters call out their attacks, but they do it less often. And usually they only call out like the really, really big finishing moves and stuff. The acting is almost all great. Like they manage to embody the silliness and goofiness of One Piece and these characters while still acknowledging the serious core and allowing us to really connect with them on an emotional level. Like, Luffy is still a weirdo, he's still kind of dumb, but when his friends get hurt or when they're in danger, he gets serious. The only one I'm iffy on is Usopp because his actor is fine, I didn't think he was terrible, but he doesn't really bring it and embody the character the way people like Luffy's actor and Zoro and Nami and Sanji and like all of them, they really, really make those roles. And Usopp is just kind of okay, so he might just be bad by comparison. However, my favorite actor in this entire season, my favorite performance, I should say, is Buggy the Clown. And I was so surprised by that, but it is amazing. It's one of the highlights of the show. Like, he manages to be, even in his first appearance where he first meets the Straw Hats, he manages to be really creepy, kind of intimidating, and hilarious all at once. <laughs> like, he's creepy just because of the way he looks and the environment and the way he carries himself. You're like, oh, this dude's like a deformed clown man. Uh, and you also see that he has destroyed and imprisoned an entire town of people and has them chained up in a circus tent and has them applaud for him on demand so that he can pretend that he's a successful showman. And he's also very funny because he just gets angry about Luffy allegedly making fun of his nose. And he has a bigger role in this season than you might think. I am totally okay with that because I loved everything with him. I am looking forward to more of Buggy the Clown. The action scenes also managed to keep their anime-ness while still not being too, too crazy, you know? Like, there are big flashy moves. People do like flips, like in a martial arts movie and stuff. Like, it's, it's really big and over the top and not exactly realistic fighting, but it really, really works. <laughs> And then you have characters doing really big flashy stuff occasionally, like cutting an entire ship in half with a single swing of a sword, or 
doing an axe kick and destroying an entire building, you know, they do stuff like that, but it's done sparingly. For the most part, it's just like really well choreographed uh, fights, like you would ex expect from a decent martial arts flick. And each character does have their own unique style. You know, we have Zoro, with, who mostly fights with two swords. He only occasionally does the three sword style because, let's be honest, holding a sword in your mouth is very difficult to do. I'm gonna fuck you up. Ah. Ah. Ow. That actually hurts. And we have Sanji, who only does kicks. They don't make a huge deal out of it in the show, but he only does kicks. And then we have Nami, who fights using a staff. And so on and so forth. Like, every character has a unique fighting style, and it works out great. And I don't think there was a single action scene in this show that I thought was bad. Like, they were all well choreographed, well edited, I loved all of them. However, Nami does fight more in this than she does in the manga, because in the manga, she's not that useful in combat until much, much later. In the show, like, again, she has her staff with her, which was in the manga as well, and she just uses it more often and fights. You know, she, she knows how to hold her own, which makes her feel a bit more like she's contributing. Or, it's again, it's not that she didn't contribute originally, but it feels like she's contributing more here. However, you can expect the usual suspects to complain about wokeness and how this is destroying Western civilization and yada fucking yada. Again, reminder, Eiichiro Oda approved basically every change they made in this show before it was made. This world looks and feels amazing and unique, too. Like, everything from the costuming, to the set designs, to, again, like, weird stuff like fishmen being treated very casually by the characters, and seeing, like, the unique cultures of everything, and, uh, the powers that people can have. Like, everything about this makes this world seem not only different than our world, but it makes it feel distinct and different from pretty much anything you see in live action. You know, because in live action, we have, like, gritty, low fantasy stuff. We have occasional, like, more flashy, high fantasy stuff. We have sci-fi stuff, but we don't really have anything like One Piece, which is a weird mashup of fantasy, sci-fi, and pirate adventures. You know, like, you mix all those together in such a way, and it's something that people have just not seen before. And, like, obviously, again, I've read the manga, so I have seen this before, but it'll be totally unique to people who have not. Overall, I just have very few complaints about the One Piece live-action show. Like I said, I was wrong. I s was thinking it was gonna suck, but I, I was wrong, and I'm glad to be wrong. Like, I, it's good on its own, just as its own thing, and it's good as an adaptation of a story that I like. So, it's a great watch. It, it just is. I, I want to see more. I want to see season 2, 3, 10, 50. Like... <laughs> It'll probably, it, it's not going to adapt the whole story. I just seriously doubt that'll happen. But, you know, I, I, I am, a man can dream. That is the main theme of One Piece, is that you should always follow your dreams. And you know what? I am happy that the people who wanted to make it live action followed their dreams, because this was great. I recommend it to fans of the manga. I recommend it to people who know nothing about the manga. Go check out One Piece live action on Netflix right now. And I will see you later. Goodbye. Wait. Don't click away, I know you think the video is over, and that these are just the end credits, but we have a sniper nearby, he's aiming directly at your head. If you click away, you're gonna die. All these names here are my patrons, these are the people that send me money once a month over on Patreon. If you want to get stuff like early access to videos, then consider, you know, doing that, becoming one of these guys. And a special thanks to my $10 and up patrons who are Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santotis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Chibs Ahoy, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dio, Echo, Flax, James M, Karkat Kitsune, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Microphone, Mistboy, Mitsimona, Peep the Toad, Roby Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Psych Excess, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Tesla Shark, Ve Victus, and Wesley. I truly could not do this without all of you, and you know, you're great. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. Uh, after this, once the video is over, you can click away. The sniper will not kill you. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.